Here we go. Welcome, everybody, to another stream. Super excited. We're going to do a hard surface, as you can tell from the imagery and the pump up music. I don't know about the rest of you, but it's like Club Zebra. I think everybody's probably doing this, Tien. So I'd like to welcome our guest, Tien Fo, to be a part of this stream. Tien, thanks for uh, joining us on the stream. Yeah, thanks to uh, inviting me. Uh, I'm super excited for this stream. Yeah. Yeah, I think a lot of chat people are excited too because. Uh, you really are doing everything inside of ZBrush for all your hard surface. All that imagery was Tian's work that you were seeing ahead of time. And it's all 100% done in ZBrush. And you're even yeah. going to touch, you started playing with Redshift. So you're going to even touch on how you're starting to use Redshift inside of ZBrush at the end too. So yes. for those of just tuning in, Tian's going to be walking us through his hard surface techniques uh, and how he likes to use ZBrush. And then finishing mm -hmm. off with how he's starting to implement Redshift with inside of ZBrush as well to get his final renders. Um, yep. So it's going to be a very, very fun show for us all. As always, I'm here to be bad comedic relief and also take on any questions that are coming through in the in the chat. Uh, I'll be monitoring that for Tien and uh, sending that questions where I can to him. Keep in mind, obviously, he's got a lot of stuff he wants to cover, but we'll do our best to funnel as much as we can to him um, and then answer any other questions I might be able to answer in the chat. For you all that's what i'm also be here to do as well so i i say we uh we get going huh are you ready to yeah all I'm right totally well, ready all right <laughs> so i'm gonna <laughs> hand it over to you now and let you uh take it from here and i will be just in the background and taking questions and sending questions to you cool uh can you guys see my screen now yes see my okay yep. cool so this is the uh subject we're going to be working on today, uh, this robot that I built most recently. Um, <clears throat> so let's get started. Um, so I'm a concept artist uh, working in the game industry. So uh, it's probably not going to be uh, uh, too, uh, I'm, I, I'm probably not going to cover uh, too many about uh, the topology or UV, that kind of stuff. It's mostly uh, how I think when I design. Um, and we, we're gonna end it up with uh, a render like this at the end. So let me uh, turn off Redshift real quick. Um, sorry about this. Uh, we're gonna start from uh, a block out. Uh, so like I said, uh, I'm a concept artist, and whenever you're, I'm w working on a design or a concept design, um, it is better to start from some sort of referencing. Uh, so I have this uh, pure ref file that I uh, cover, uh, that I uh, have here. So this robot is, uh, is originally uh, inspired by the, um, the special force team uh, in Taiwan, uh, where I'm originally from, uh, and I really like the 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 mask, as you can see here, uh, the simplicity, uh, and it, it kind of gives you a a mysterious or um, and also cold blooded feeling. Um, so I was thinking uh, maybe I should do some design uh, that goes around with this mask. Um, so yeah, so this this is the uh, the original uh, in inspiration. And so I uh, look up in the internet and try to find some uh, other uh, reference that, that resonate the idea uh, of the simplicity of this design, Mo mostly about this mask. And I came up with this uh, this image here, uh, I really like the design of this. is It is very simple, and it's <clears throat> it has some very cool shapes, and um, it kind of feels the same uh, like this mask. It's very simple, and it also uh, and and it only have like limited element to the design. Um, so yeah, uh, so. I started out with this uh, very simple uh, mannequin, and we're, we're going to go from here to 
here. This is how I block out the whole thing. Uh, I think you look. Uh, you can look around this guy. Um, yeah, let's get started. I'll. I'm not gonna go through the whole the whole body. I'm probably just gonna do the head. And uh, yeah, let's get started. So let me duplicate. So cool. And I'm gonna be work, working on this. So I'll start from this uh, sphere here. Um, I'm gonna create a folder. So, uh, let me hit. Oh, look at you naming things. Look at that. Everyone's right out the gate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's better to uh yeah. to get to be organized. So um normally I will start from uh primary shapes. Um so let me know if you have any questions um while I go through here. Um so there are only uh, two main thing about this mask, uh, which is the take a look. There's only the eyes and the nose, right, and not and nothing else. So I'm gonna do the nose first um, by using the primary shapes, um, along with live boolean. I think live boolean is one of the best uh, feature uh, within ZBrush when it comes to hard surface. Um, so, uh, yeah. So you immediately start going immediate, right into live boolean's and I see you're doing an intersect and just playing with that. Yeah, yeah. Look. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, let me, uh, so I'm trying to create uh, a uh, surface break here that would give you an idea of the nose and also uh, following through with the uh, with the face uh, all the way to the forehead. Um, Something like that. And uh, well, this looks okay to me. Uh, I'm, I'm going to do uh, so, uh, but but the chin right right now is a little bit short, so I'm going to get longer. I'll probably give this a better, uh, let's see. Let's mask this, and because I'm only working on um, primary shapes, the surface looks very cl uh, clean. Um, I think it's just easier for me to, you know, navigate through all the different uh, faces, uh, uh, sorry, surface, and just play around with the design. Um, so yeah, that's okay. I'm gonna cut the uh, the space for the neck. Uh, let's duplicate another one. Go to Q cube. Um, something like that. And uh, if you press D, uh, you probably notice uh, the dynamic subdivision. Uh, there's a cool feature with the uh, Q grid, minus 24. And you can play around with the edge, like how how hard you want the edge to be. I'm gonna use chamfer instead of bevel. Yeah, for those that didn't see, look in the corner. Um, yeah, it's right here. And the cube also in visually inside the document space, his corners being changed. Um, if you go where his nose is across, go ahead and play with that coverage slider from that profile view so they can see it again, just in case, Tian. Sorry, here? Yeah, yeah. See, right there. You guys can see that corner changing. So that's what he's yeah, yeah. manipulating. Here. It's more obvious here. Yeah. Yeah. So you can play around with this uh, the edge. And the good thing about, uh, you know, 
using live boolean is that uh, combined with the modeler, uh, hockey would be BZM. Uh, you know, you can create all kinds of different uh, all kinds of different edges. And, and the good thing is that, you know, say for example, I'm working on the, I'm, I'm working on, uh, on the bottom, right? And say if I wanna work on the forehead, I just click here and you can work on the forehead. Then if you feel like uh, maybe I'm, maybe the neck might need some work and you can just click back and the gizmo is still aligned. Uh, uh, ZBrush stores your gizmo. So you, you don't need to worry about, you know, the orientation and you can you know, back here and start to play around with the design. And you probably want to spend some time uh, here to just uh, so don't don't rush uh, too much. Uh, you want to spend some time here to get a better design uh, at the very first time. Uh, so a question like came in for this process. When you are oh, yeah. done with this process and you convert the mesh from the live billions, do you end up retopologizing it? Or do you just keep the mesh as is as a conceptual artist since yeah. that's what you're doing? What do you do? I, I don't I don't go to the uh, zero measure or retopologize. I, I just dynamesh. <laughs> and then Is eventually that... you and eventually you end up decimating with decimation master. Yeah, yeah. For some for some pieces. Okay. Yeah. There you go. And funneling questions. If, if that, those again, guys, where you can put questions, we'll try to funnel where we can funnel the questions to him to TN. Yeah. And uh, and you might say that this process is a little bit limiting. Um, say, for example, this curve is like a perfect curve. So we're gonna combine uh, with sorry with the deformer hard here, and you can I normally just use two, and and you can play around. Say, if I wanted a more obvious forehead. Um, or, you know, maybe less, maybe smoother here. Um, I think that looks better. Except. I'll play around with the nose. Uh, So far, so good. Yeah, I think it's coming together pretty. I like that yeah. you're doing it in the kind of this flow. It is, in a way, a non destructive because you're just using pieces of geometry to get to this result. And then you can go to each one and make different changes. And yeah. things not linked together topology wise. You're, you're giving yourself some freedom to mess around with the silhouettes and shapes. Yeah. And you don't need to care about, you know, topology or yeah. wireframe, stuff like that. Uh, I'll probably create a middle line here. Um, let me create a middle line. Yeah, that's better. Um, <clears throat> so uh, this is the big shape that uh, that I have. Uh, so when it comes to design, uh, at this stage, uh, you want to avoid stuff like this like this this edge here is almost the same length as this edge so i'm trying so i'm gonna try to get rid of that uh i you know moving this around see if i can get a better proportion not not so e equal yeah that's a great and also yeah uh, you, you, I'm, I'm trying to avoid any. Uh, well, uh, I'm trying to avoid any equalness, or, or is that a word? 
Uh, but yeah, that, yeah, we're artists. We go with it. Any word we make up, we do. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, and and during this stage, you can also play around with uh, some middle, mid, uh, some middle shape. So I'm gonna uh, go to this sub tool and duplicate another. Um, I'm going to a cylinder. And uh, so, so I'll try to avoid my personal uh, pa panel uh, so that you know where everything is. But you have uh, your own custom menu then. So he's made his own custom menu that, yeah, yeah. that you're using. Do you have one specifically just for hard surface or is just this menu you're for anything you're doing in ZBrush, you're using this menu you've made? Yeah, I, I only have this one. Well, I, I, I mostly work with uh, hard, hard surface stuff. So yeah. Um, yeah, so crease this. Uh, try to add in the eyes. And um, let's see. So there's a, a very subtle, there's a very subtle uh, weight uh, towards the middle and more pointy at the end. So I'm trying to uh, do that with the um sorry oh sorry with the uh deformer hard so let's try doing that and maybe this here yep that's okay except um, I'm going to mirror well. going to subtract. And so, uh, as you can see here, uh, it's not working uh, for the nose. So I'm going to put this down around here. Yeah. So it's cutting everything. Um, symmetry. It's smaller, uh, like that. That's, that's okay. And you can uh, combine with all the, um, you know, and you can try to put putting all kinds of different uh, middle shape you want. I'm gonna duplicate this one and go to cube. Um, gonna make it uh, near like that. Uh, I'm gonna use a little. Uh, so I'm I'm gonna use uh, Z modeler to do some adjustment. Uh, let's get rid of sorry. Let's get rid of this edge. Um, so now I'm trying to. Adding some details uh, back here uh, by using uh, light boolean. So you shared in the beginning where your inspiration came for for the face, but a question came through uh, oh. that a person often struggles to design, and they're more to creating differences at most art station. Something similar that people show in ZBrush Summit. So where do you get your inspiration from, usually? when you're making oh, these design oh. decisions? That's a good question. Uh, so normally, if you're working in a company or with clients, they will provide uh, some sort of uh, trace that you can follow. But if you're working on your own uh, personal project, I think it's better to... Um, I think it's better to filter out uh, references. Say, for example, uh, I have this uh, sort of a, a cultural relationship with with the uh, with the mask because we're both from Taiwan, <laughs> uh, and and I really like the mask. The um, and and that's why I want to you know create something around it. 
uh, and I think it's better <clears throat> to referencing uh, stuff from real, real image. Uh, sorry, real photos, or, or, or you know, it it could be you know something from from the news, or uh, uh, from from your uh, from your everyday life, or 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 you know, photos that you took. And I'm, I'm, I, I try to stay away from our, our station uh, because uh, I, I'll try to keep my, uh, my, my mind uh, just only keep it free. Keep it free from your, your decision. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So Adding some detail here. Hopefully that helps. <laughs> yeah. So, sorry. If, if, if um, I, 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 I don't know if that answers the question. <laughs> because if you uh, if you re reference someone else's work, then I think most people would easily tell you know that oh that's probably some copy from someone else's work or maybe a fan art or something and you kind of lose that you know that 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 effort right um, so you can keep adding uh you know this basically you can keep ad adding these little details uh here and there um put it back in You know, so you're taking this idea also. from the other image that you shared of that one piece you liked in your um, pure ref, right? You're yeah, taking yeah. this idea from that other that piece. This, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you're taking that idea and what they did in that piece and then applying it to the mask. Um, yeah. Combining the two, in essence, to come up with your, your final piece. Right, right, right. Yeah. So you can um, add what in, uh, whatever uh, details that you like. And you can just keep going this, uh, keep, keep going with this, you know. Uh, more cubes. Um, and more Z modeler. Uh, get rid of that. So for this project, you were mostly using Z Modeler most of the time to do all the changes um, and doing these small updated pieces, design changes. Yeah, mostly. And uh, that's it. Uh, I'm probably gonna add another here. And I can show you uh, the result uh, real quick. Uh, Uh, kind of living in that world of happy mistakes kind of you're not even sure until you start playing with the piece where you're going right yeah um that's okay uh, and this can go on and on and <laughs> uh right or add another one last uh one last piece. Um, I'll put it here. Uh, and um, I like the, uh, so I like the the Z shape here. So I'm going to put that in as well. And this could be easily done within, uh, with Z modeler. I'm going to use slide. Uh, just bevel. 
And then, uh, yeah, something like that. As you can see, um, I can spend like hours on, on this kind of stuff and just get a get get, get whatever um, design that I want, right? And so this will. So I ended up with with this guy here. Um, and the good thing about this is that, you know, say for example, I'm I'm working on the head, right? And suddenly, I I saw this edge right here at the rib cage is too sharp, and I can just go here and click, hold Alt and click on the surface, and it will switch to the uh, mesh here. You can just round it up. Oh, it's too round. Or something like that and you can just you know uh, keep going on with this this is too sharp here probably get it rounder um, so yeah uh, let me show you uh, some of the uh, the mesh here so this is the rib cage um, the chest uh, and with so that's a uh, the 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 overlapping uh, live boolean. Uh, and yeah, that's what you started with. You started with in essence an egg shape. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so so the geometry looks uh, very bad, <laughs> but but it doesn't really matter, right? Uh, as long as you get your design, uh, the design you want. Good. This chamfer. Right. So um, once you have, so, uh, hold on. Let me go back here. So um, let's see. So, so yeah. So, so once you have uh, the design that you like, uh, and and you and you you're you, you're done with all the design, uh, I I think it's better uh, to figure out the joints now because uh, a lot of those uh, like like this uh, this uh, the, this joint is gonna be. Uh, uh, heavily uh, relate. Uh, so it's going to be he heavily related to the 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 actual joints. Uh, it's going to follow the the, the joints. Um, so I'll put up the joints here. So that's when uh, you know uh, you have to f uh, figure out what joints you want. And I actually have the reference here. So before you move further, you actually go and figure out, okay, how are all my joints are going to yeah. look like for that this project? Right, right. Before you move on to the rest of the higher details. Yeah, uh, before you finalize it with live boolean, uh, right, right. Because you 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 uh, once you finalize the the live boolean, it's hard to to do the 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 surface changing, uh, like I just did. Uh, so it's better, uh, you know, like for the knees, uh, the ankle, the elbow, hip, uh, shoulders, stuff like that. Uh, and and these are all uh, just built in. Just uh, oh, oh that's one subtool. So let me uh, isolate this guy first. So you you pulled up a bunch of references. How do you start searching for the references for joints? I saw some of them were, you know, other characters, but some of them were actually real world examples of robots and stuff yeah. built in today's society. 
what do you do? How do you, what do you do? If someone's asking, um, how do you search for your references for joints? What do you normally do? So uh, as you can see here, um, these are the uh, actual uh, knee joints for for the patients. Uh, the the prosthetic prosthetics prosthetics. Yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, also, this ankle uh, is actually you, you know uh, another prosthetic. Um, and also, it looks cool. Uh, so, so I like med, uh, medical stuff, and also, uh, you know, if you uh, if you're searching for robots, uh, space, uh, lab, you know, then you'll find something that you know, like the real researcher how how they you know work with how how they design a robot and how they come up with you know different joints. Uh, yeah, so these are just uh, images from from different, uh, you know, real research papers. Um, yeah. Nice. I would also recommend the person asked it. A lot of times I will go to assembly lines, like manufacturing assembly lines, where mm -hmm. we're, we're building cars now with robot arms. Go take a mm -hmm. look at those things so you'll see how much oh, movement yeah. has got to be in pivoting on that. And construction equipment. I would say it's another one I tend to pull to from a lot and looking mm -hmm. at all that. Cause that's also, they're making stuff that has to take certain pressure, certain weight shifting, you know, digging and things like that. You'll see a lot of cool stuff engineering wise and those mm -hmm. two things as well. And I think prosthetics is an absolute fantastic um, recommendation there as well. Yeah. Like, like these references, these are real life uh, prosthetic and it looks uh, both functional and cool, right? Like this is well designed, like the shapes uh, and everything. Which ZBrush uh, is used to do this stuff too, FYI. Oh, really? Yes, ZBrush is used to design prosthetics. Yep. Yep. Well, that's cool. Oh, that's I didn't one know of the software is used, of course. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah. L uh, like I said, uh, uh, real life references instead of, uh, you know, other artists' work. Yeah. Yeah, they've already so, figured it out. So you're just now taking their ideas engineering-wise if they figured it out and just... Yeah, yeah. ...your design now. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Cool. Uh, Matt, so, uh, Matt, you're that's saying good. Easter egg? <laughs> Hidden ink? I'm just commenting to the person, people in the chat. <laughs> oh, okay. So yeah, let's go back to ZBrush. So yeah, uh, you know, uh, these are pretty simple, uh, simply modeled uh, from from ZModeler uh, and with some uh, IAM brush for this, uh, for, for these details. But once you put this, these uh, joints uh, once you figure out these joints, and then you put back to uh, to, to the blockouts, uh, you will soon realize that a lot of things is it doesn't match, right? Like for example, this ankle uh, doesn't match with with my my blockout, so I'm gonna. I'm gonna click on the surface here and that's two shapes. So I'm gonna split hidden and move my gizmo here. Because the uh the the shape is is you know the the geometry is is so simple and you can easily align your gizmo. Uh, the direction you want. And let me uh, try to match this. You know, um, something like that. Uh, I'll probably get rid of this. I'll get, get rid of this. Let's get rid of that. Um, Oh no. 
Does it work? Uh -oh. Where is it? Oh, it's right here. So since you brought up the, the joint, someone was asking, uh, first of all, they say great work. Um, how much do you consider for rigging process when designing? Like how much the character or robot in the case will move its arms, fists and rotation, et cetera? Oh, yeah. Uh, that's a good question. Uh, so when I was doing my research, uh, say, for example, like, like th this is great. You know, this gives me a good idea of how the joints work. And so, like, or, or for example, um, for example, like this joint, uh, oh, I don't have the, the reference here, but uh, like uh, for, for this joint, uh, well, like for every joint, it's, it's a good, uh, like you have to figure out, you know, what is rotating, and you keep the cylinder uh, there. Like for for example, uh, uh, like for this joint here. Uh, yeah. Like I have the shield, and I have these uh, all all the cylinders there so uh when i give this to uh the modeler or the the animator they know where to put you know all the uh actual axis to align with all the all the join and and uh like for example the hand nice hand is also the same very nice uh, nice hand thanks <laughs> Yeah, look at, you're uh, yeah. looking at it almost like a skeleton, right? Your cylinders are in essence your skeleton, right? For the right. hard surface pieces, the hinge, right? the 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 hinge joint, uh, you know, and also, uh, I'm I'm not super, uh, technical with the uh with the, with the joints, uh, but you should just kind of have a a a decent amount of uh. Uh, understanding about how you know, like for example, your elbow is a hinge joint, and your knees is a hinge joint, and your shoulder is a ball and socket joint, you know stuff like that. And when it comes to mechanical stuff, is a little bit more than that. Like for example, uh, like the shoulder here. Uh, so this shoulder is different from. This shoulder in Terminator, uh, as you can see here, um, there are different uh, cylinders. Like this, this is one cylinder here, and there's another one here, and there's another one here. So it has three, three, uh, three degrees of freedom, like like it says here. Uh, so that will create a, a a free range of motion for your shoulder, right? Uh, and as for the the Terminator ones, uh, you know, it is is a little bit different. Like, it still have the three axes, but it's arranged in a different way. Uh, and so for this one, like, this is a a a ball and socket joint, right? And it's just like a ball and a socket, and it used different strings to to move it. So. Uh, I, I think this one is probably easier for the modeler or animator to to animate and to to rig. Um, so that's why I, I I'll probably consider the, these ones. Um, but yeah, just keep keep all the cylinders uh, there so that you know the animator knows where to put the axis. Yeah, I hope that. Yeah. Helped. Yeah, yeah. I would say what someone is bringing up again is so it's a proxy mesh being used in a way. Look at the cylinders as kind of the proxy mesh that's going to you be used from the animators and riggers to move the model. The other tip I would say, just like what Tian was saying, when you're doing something hard surface, right, and we have the shoulder movement like this, we underestimate all of this movement. 
But now when you're doing mm -hmm. Mac and hard surface, you got to think you want this movement. What do you need to make this movement happen? Right. You, right, you want right. this movement. What do you need? You want this movement. What do you need? Right. And then that'll help you break down. And some of the examples got where a cylinder makes place to make this movement happen. This movement happens going to be at your elbow. So forth and so on. So that would be some of my recommendations as well. Yeah. They're great. <laughs> uh where uh, where was i uh, uh you were breaking okay. down your joints and then showing your joints yeah. and showing your design change based upon your uh your joint decision now yeah yeah um uh, so yeah uh you oh uh one thing i have to say um is you know when when you're working on your blockouts like uh stuff like this uh mostly what you're thinking is the the silhouette you know you're 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 thinking about the, the 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 design like for example how how you want the head you know to curve uh, like this or, um, you know like like that and how you want to put you know all the different uh, surfaces you know uh, you know to go across the body and it's more like a a, comp uh, a composition uh, way of thinking, you know. Uh, so, you know, I I have this image here. Um, where is it? Oh, it's right here. You know, like if you look at uh, uh, Baroque period oil painting, they have this uh, really cool uh, composition method called the the gamut. Uh, they align with uh, these invisible uh, lines all throughout the painting uh, so that the audience will feel a, a certain rhythm, you know, when they are looking at the painting, you know. But these lines are invisible. And you can apply this to your Mac so that, you know, like, for example, this line... How this line would uh, uh, align with the rest of the body, like for for example, like like this line, like this, this line right here, uh, does it? So how how does it? Uh, you know, how do I angle? How how do I figure out the angle? How do I settle down? You know, because like this might work and this might work. And you know this might work, and how do I finalize you know the the angle that I want? Um, I think it's a good method you know to just uh, repeat all these different angles all the way through. You know, um, yeah. So just kind of keep playing around with uh, these different these different edges Wait. oh it's not something about it. Yeah. oh yeah uh once you figure out you know all the joints uh and all the design is matching with the joints you can start to put in some details so i'm gonna go here uh, I'm gonna still be working on the the mask or the the head. So this is the head that I that I have, um, just like the ones we did, you know, with some more details here and there. Uh, so I'm just gonna uh, click this uh, uh, boolean with subdivision, uh, and this will calculate, you know. Everything in, inside of inside your fo folder to give you a mesh like this. So this is the head that will be adding details. Okay, I'm gonna get rid of the eye. I'm not going to work on the eyes for now. The hidden. 
Um, so at this stage, I, I, I don't, I because I'm a concept artist. I I don't really uh, care too much about the uh, the topology. You know, uh, so I'll probably just Dynamesh right now. Uh, use the picker, picker uh, a thousand here and Dynamesh. And once you Dynamesh, as you can see, because you have all these groups still there, you can, uh, you know, work on your edges. Like for example, I, I. I probably don't want this edge to be that hard. So I'm going to select this uh, group and this group. And I'm going to go to masking, uh, a mask by feature. I'm going to turn off border and crease and click that and keep the groups. And it will create a mask uh, along the border of your uh, these two groups. Uh, let's soft this a little bit. I mean, you can use all kinds of different ways to uh, work on the uh, the edges, but this is just how I uh, how I use that. Uh, how 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 I work with this edge. It's simply. Oh, oh, oh. No. And then you're using a polish. Yeah, just polish it. That looks okay to me. Let me just do it again. And that looks better. If I do that again. Yeah. I think that's that's good. Uh and you can keep playing around with uh the mask. Uh So I think this might be leading to one of the questions that was actually asked that I wanted to ask you. Um, huh? So for their love in the process, uh, but they were just curious, since you, you weren't doing a lot of organic sculpting tools, what was the advantage of using ZBrush for this instead of a traditional modeling? Well, uh, that's a good question because, uh, yeah, that's a good question. Like, like you might say, you know, you can do that in, uh, do this and that in, in Fusion or, you know, uh, Maya or whatever software you want. But at the end of the day, uh, you know, a lot of a lot of the project that I work on, you know, they might want you to put some cape on it. You want, they, they might want me to put some bandage, you know, on the gun uh, or, you know, put a dragon head on your pistol or, you know, Stuff like that, and you you eventually gonna work, still gonna have to face your organic stuff, and so I just think it's easier for me to keep everything inside ZBrush, and I don't need to, uh, you know, jump from different softwares. Uh, just easier for me to, you know, keep everything in ZBrush. Yeah, yeah. I think well, what you're doing is a great example because now you're organically adjusting this because you're upping the resolution and then playing with that, oh, yeah, yeah. that softer blend. And then you, you're going to show how you start adding even finer details, which will go to the advantage also of being inside. Yeah, yeah, game. exactly. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and it's just, it's just more freedom, you know, w within ZBrush. Like, I've, I've tried to learn Maya or Blender, but it only gets to a certain, uh, a certain point that you will realize that, oh, that's probably the limit, you know, for the software. And ZBrush just kind of have everything in it. It's like a complete package when it comes to modeling, right? And so um, that's why I stay with ZBrush for the time. Um, yeah. I'll probably soft the, uh, the nose here. Um, yeah, I'm gonna do a... Uh, uh, mask two. Can get rid of this uh, this edge. 
Um, soft this. Uh, yeah. And um, don't need this mask. Yeah, that looks that looks good to me. Um, I, I'll have to mirror well. Uh, get rid of that. Um, so once you have, uh, I, I mean, you can uh, work on all these uh, edges if you want. Uh, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna do a very quick one uh, with all the, <laughs> with all the edges to be soft, softer. Like that. All right, uh, and I'm gonna add in uh, the the cut lines. Uh, I mean, a lot of people use. Uh, I mean, there are different ways uh, in ZBrush that you can create. You know, uh, a a a a cut line. But uh, my uh, I I do it pretty slowly because I think. Uh, cut line is very important when it comes to a uh, hard surface. Uh, I use cut line for mainly two purpose. Uh, one is to uh, to to give you an idea of the the functionality of 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 the design. Uh, say, for example, if you look at a uh, any sort of uh, industrial design stuff, uh, like 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 this mouse. Uh, the the cut line is always uh, very limited to 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 the frame or uh, to the very end of the product or 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 even uh, you know the the tablet you know there's very limited to to you know around the corner or or uh, like like it's always just like around the 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 edge of the product. So that that's one thing that uh, that you want to keep in mind when it comes to uh, cut line. You don't want to um, you know put a cut like right here, or you know, or or, or, or I mean, you you could, but it just uh, it, it looks kind of kind kind of weird, like if you put something like this, and and keep adding you know all kinds of details. Uh, so I will be very careful about my cut lines, and the other purpose is more of a artistic, art, artistic purpose. Uh, say, for example, if I I just eliminate or, or I, I I just soften uh, this edge, right? But there is still a subtle uh, subtle surface change, like from here to here, and if you want to em em uh, emphasize the design, is you can uh, easily use the cut line, you know, to go through the surface, so that when people uh, look at it, they will they can tell a clear, uh, you know, surface change, like from here to here, right? Uh, I'm not sure if I'm yeah. <laughs> right now yeah, no, no, no. yeah you're, you're, it's serving a purpose like you're you're making a decision based upon the cut line serves a purpose um, yeah yeah to what you're doing it's not and, just and, to put a cut line somewhere to put a cut line necessarily you're you're first looking at function of, yeah yeah well and i mostly use uh mask uh first i, I use lasso because it's uh faster for me i can just drag drag um, so now there's another problem. Uh, like this line here is the same as this line, and it doesn't gives you any other in information. So I'm trying to stay away from this uh, by adding more detail on on this line. So for example, if I more, make it look like this. And I'll probably add in a different change here. Um, and also, like this line is almost the same as this line, so I'm so, so I'll 
I'll have to create something that is different. Uh, something like that, maybe. I'll play. Something like that. Uh, yeah. So now this line is is almost as the same as th this line. So I'm so I'm trying to break that. You don't want you know. You probably don't want you know stuff to be the same. Uh, you don't want to tell the same story over and over. So uh, try to get rid of that. Wait, what am I doing? I freehand this a little bit. Uh, No, stuff like that. And and you can put in uh, more details on on the line here, you know, uh, once we fi finalize the cut lines. Um, I'll probably put another shape here. Do you have and, a specific lighting or material you use when you're looking at your model for highlighting the bevels, picking up details, and looking at surface distortions? Oh, I normally use uh, these two. Uh, basic material and basic material B? Yeah. And then you just have a standard? No, you have your light. You moved your light a little bit, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I put it here. Uh, just easier for me to to look at the model. Great, thank you. Stuff like that, yeah. Um, yeah, uh, like I said, uh, you want to keep you know the composition thinking in mind. Like for example, this this line, it doesn't align with anything else. Like this line, this line, and lit, and this line, they're all in different directions, and. Uh, you probably want to. You probably don't want to do that. You probably want to. Uh, they're more aligned. Uh, yeah, like this line. So this line is probably not gonna align. Yeah. So this line will probably align with this. Um. And this line. And probably align that with this. Uh, no, it doesn't look good. <laughs> uh, I'll probably align with with uh, with this. I'm just gonna move it here. Yeah, that looks a little better. So once you um, you know, once you figure out your cut lines, uh, what I normally do is I would just well first clean up you know the cut line that is only on the surface that I want. And you can uh, you can hide points, and I'll create a edge loop by pressing edge loop, and I will isolate the cut line, and I will press Control Shift X to uh, expand the visibility, and I will assign another group by Control W, and I will shrink twice back to the. Uh, but back back to the cut line, the uh, the edge the edge loop that was edited, and uh oh, might have lost Tian. Hold on, people, we might have lost him for a moment. Uh, you guys can still hear me, okay? I'm assuming on all right.
yeah, I'll read you one of the art books for sure while we wait. Oh, it looks like we completely lost him. He might have lost the internet on his side. Well, um, we'll see if uh, he can come back. Give us a moment. And let's see. <laughs> nice Skynet. Yes. Um, so we'll reach. Hold on. Let us reach out to him real quick and see where he is at. I'm sure it was probably some internet thing. But I think, well, don't go anywhere. I appreciate you all sticking around um, and uh, sticking with us. So let me reach out to him. Give me one second. I want to start reaching out to him and see if we get him back. If you got any other questions while I am doing that, by all means, fire away and we will, I'll answer what I can. I'm just going to send him an email and see if he gets an email from us. I think his internet went down on him. Of course, the timing. Uh, let me send him an email real quick. And I can fill some stuff for cut lines real quick for you all while we're waiting. Okay. Um, Kyle, I'm going to give you... Um, his email too. So you might want to reach out too, just since I will in a second here share my screen and I'll show you all some cut line stuff that I like to do as well. Since we were on the topic of cut lines, why not? Let's go down that uh, rabbit hole. All right, let me get this over. All right. And now my. My microwave still okay. I had to move my microwave, so um, my microwave, my microphone, so that I could actually uh, talk to you all because it was in the way of my screen. So sounds still good. Um, hold on. See, Kind Wonder, you were asking, uh, Kid Wonder. Sorry. Uh, how did Tian move that mask? Like how he masked from the jaw, and moved the same mask toward the back of the head. Reference. Ah, okay. Okay. So let me share my screen now while we wait and see if Tian gets internet back. Uh, let me share this, share that. And let's change the way we're looking at this. There we go. Thanks, Kyle. All right, everyone see my screen okay? Right, okay, so for the first question that came through with that masking question, um, he was using Spacebar to do that, okay? So hold on, let me... I'm going to rearrange my mouse a little bit. I wasn't preparing my monitor to be a presenter, but give me one second. All right, so here we go. All right, so he was copying that mask um, in the sense he was looking. And again, one thing I'd point out that he also did is he had perspective off. So that was key because obviously you're doing hard surface. There's usually a consistent going through the whole model. Um, and so you percentagely don't have perspective on when you're doing a lot of hard surface stuff, Okay. So for his mask, he was using, again, the masking lasso here. And so he was just making lasso changes like this, right? So what he was doing was he was going back to this line, following it, right? And if you notice, if you look at my camera, I don't have my hand on the keyboard, okay? So I tend to do this personally. Once you started masking, you don't need to hold your keyboard anymore. Now, if you hold the space bar, you can move that wherever else you want and copy that same line again. So then now I would just fill that in and there. Now I have that line and that line are the same angle that he was talking about, okay? So that's something that you can do. There's something else I wanna add into, um, into this with the lasso. If you all, something we added, if you turn on lazy mouse, we made your lasso be even more smooth when you are working so it doesn't won't have it'll have even a smoother line when you're drawing out 
but more importantly, you can actually draw like very specific harsh lines. Tien's back, right? So here's a little something for you all. Tien, we saw you, you're all set. We lost yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So I was just kind of covering to see you get your internet back. So again, cool, cool. if you turn on the lazy mouse, you guys are actually activating something else you can do with the lasso. Number one, you have a stepping. All this now plays a control. So you have stepping. You can add a, a radius. So while you're doing this, there's now a radius to your actually lasso. So it's just like sculpturally, this is now creating a nicer line because we're not dropping the lasso until the radius has been completed. completed. Then we start dropping the lasso. But again, once you have that lazy mouse turned on, if you now just hold down the shift key, you can actually move and put a line wherever you want. And you let go of the shift key, we draw the lasso to the end, but then it's perfectly straight along that line. If I hold the shift key again, then I can do that again. Hold the shift key again, do it again. Hold the shift key again and do it again. Okay, and again, my hand is not on the keyboard. I do not hold down the control key. I don't need to. The brush is engaged. My pen's on my Cintiq. And then that's it. And I just let go of everything and I get my mask. So reiterating, okay, again, I'm holding the control key now. Tian, if you want to share your screen um, and then we'll oh, get yeah. you back. We'll get you back up and running. They don't want to hear me. So then they <laughs> come in here again. Again, I'm not holding the keyboard. Look up here. Keyboard, right? See, like snapping, right? Shift key, let go. Shift key, let go. Shift key, let go, right? Shift key, let go. And then I let go of everything and I get my mask. Okay? So there's something else for you all with what Tian was doing with the lasso. Add another addition. But we're going to kick it back to him um, because he's back with us. So I'll send it back to you, Tian. Hey, hey guys. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I, 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 uh, I don't know where was I when... You were showing the you were showing the masks, and then you were duplicating the masks, and then you were at the point where you were going to show how you created the actual crease line, the actual oh, yeah. line of the panel group. That that's where we ended. They didn't see how you actually finished off making the line that you pushed in. You were oh okay. Mas you were masking the poly group. You grew it, made a new poly group, then you shrunk it back down, made a new poly group. So they didn't see that end result. Uh, okay. Yeah, look how far he got <laughs> during, during the lots of internet. Yeah, so yeah. yeah, yeah, you had no crease, you had no line, you had no scribe line. That's yeah, oh, keep, okay. Keep going back, like, like here. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, there okay. you go. Yeah, yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah, there was a big silence that I don't yeah. know why. <laughs> yeah, uh, so yeah, you have the mask. With the um, with the cut line already, then you can just you know uh, inflate in a little bit, and you soft your mask, and then you polish by group. This will give you a super clean cut, and you probably want to polish it again, you know, to get it softer. I mean, there there are millions of different ways. Of, you know, doing the cut lines, and this is just the way how I normally do. It's slow, but it's but but I think it's more uh, carefully done. Uh, so, like I said, uh, this this, uh, this line and this line is almost the same. It doesn't tell you any. Uh, it doesn't tell you anything. So, I'm gonna put some details here. Um, I uh, mask this surface, and I'm going to use the lasso, and mask. I'm going to use layer brush, uh, adding some details, like that, yeah, it could be Straighter like that. Um, soft a little bit. Um, 
And also, uh, like I was showing, uh, well, nobody was nobody was watching. Uh, you, I, I like to use uh, this feature called the uh, the the. I think it's in Poly Group, um, and there's a button called Group as Dynamic. Uh, sorry, Dynamesh Subtractive. Uh, I like to use this. Like for example, if I have, so this work with uh, any sort of meshes. I I like to use uh, the IMM brush. Um, so I select the cube, and w when you, so if you hold Alt, and then you drag in the cube. This will give you a inverted mesh. Where's my, where's my gizmo? Mm -hmm. Where, where's my yep. gizmo? You're good. The cube's right there inverted. Yeah, but I couldn't see my gizmo. Wait. Move. Oh, it's right here. Let's do that again. Uh, oh, out, and then drag in. Wait, where's my? What? Why is it here? Yeah, but anyways, uh, the cube is inverted. Um, and this will happen when you um. So let me uh, adjust this a little bit. So, so right now, if you uh, if you Dynamesh, uh, this will cut you know the mesh. This will su uh, subtract the mesh uh, with uh, with Dynamesh. So, I like to use this uh, to add in more details. Uh, I'm gonna put this here. Turn a little bit. Uh, make it longer, maybe. And probably, probably have say something like that. Yeah. So when you dynamesh, uh, th this will cut in. Uh, you know, like adding more detail to it. Um, so you can play around, you know, with this different, uh, with with a cut line and get more details here and there. And I'll probably put, uh, add in more details here in the mask. Um, so I think it was uh, ZBrush 2023. It came with uh, it comes with the mask region feature uh, right here. So if you click, so if you have like a closed uh, closed mask like like this, and you click auto region, it will just fill in, you know, everything inside, and it's just faster for you to you know, uh, you, you don't need to mask by yourself. Uh, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna. Yes, that was in 2023. You have to have 2023 to get that feature. Yeah. Um, uh, oh, yeah. Oh, oh, oh. In more detail. Uh, probably like that, maybe. It's weird. Uh, uh, you know, soft a little bit, you know, uh, some shape like that. Um, you can clean this up if you want. I mean, uh, yeah, something like that. And you assign the group. And um, you know, and see if this uh, go through. I think it go through a little bit. 
And then you select this group and go out and assign another group here. And then you Dynamesh again. And uh, I'm gonna polish my group. And maybe more by more polishing here and there. You know, uh, so you can just keep, you know, playing around with these details. Uh, I'll probably edit more here. Uh, 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 I'll probably add more details here. Uh, some like, some like this. No. Yeah, and then uh, I like to use this alpha. Give you a gradient. Like that. And then you just push. Ah, no. More. More alpha here. You push. It looks good. Uh, I'll probably polish it first. Then you can go, you know, more details uh, here and there. Um, and of course, you want to put in some, uh, some true here and there. I mean, you you can uh, find uh, find a lot of alpha on the internet, you know, with a what kind of different screws. Uh, I I I I I mostly just use move because <laughs> I'm lazy. <laughs> Using move with the alt key. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, move, yeah. move with the alt key. Yeah, it's working. Sometimes <laughs> the simplest way is the right way. Yeah, it's faster. Um, yeah, yeah, you don't have to uh, overanalyze and over overthink it for sure. Look at that. That's nice. That's looking awesome, dude. Yeah, I think it's. So far, I so like good. that change. I like that change in the cheek and then get along there. That's that's cool. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> uh, like yeah, you I, put that in your final one too. That's that's a cool. Uh, I like that. I know it's going yeah. away from the main design, but from the original. But I like what you did there. That's cool. It really breaks up things and brings it together. That's really cool. Yeah, just adding more. Uh, just emphasizing the, the the face a little bit more. Uh, but yeah. Uh, and then, uh, so just combine with all these different uh, methods. Uh, so here's the cleanup version of the head. And I'll show you the rest of the body. Um, so yeah, everything is probably covered. Uh, like I said, um, you know, the cut lines, uh, you know, the, 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 the layer brush, uh, the move uh, brush, <laughs> um, and also, um, you know, some masking, pushing, you know, stuff like that. So it's all really, uh, you're doing most of this just all by masking, all the, the really fine details. You're just doing masking. Yeah. Doing pushing. Yeah, these are just all just masking. And, and then the layer them. brush, you were doing all layer brush with the small accent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Brush the little pinholes. Yeah, mostly. Yeah, yeah. They asked I mean, how do you if, do all the wires. They want to know how you did all the wires. Oh, wires. Uh, the wiring. I use I I use a uh, uh, Z Z sphere. Z spheres. Yeah. Uh, it's pretty. So I think Z sphere is probably the. Easiest way when it comes to uh, wires, or you can do uh, 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 the, uh, the 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 bevel. Uh, sorry, the what was that called? Uh, sorry, like the the uh, bend curve. Uh, you're yeah. you're talking about the bend curve. Bend, bend, bend curve, yeah. You know, 
you can just drag yeah. however you want it. But uh, I, I mostly use uh, Z Sphere because I have more control to it. Um, do you want me to show it? Sure, um, you can. Yeah, if you want, to, if you want, you want to add that and show them because I think uh, what you're talking about is a great technique. And you can also now convert your Z spheres into a curve and then use any type of brush with curve too. So I think it opens up workflows. Turn this off. So yeah, uh, mostly what I did was uh, I'll get, I'll use the move one. Uh, say for example, I, I will move the start and the end first. Uh, so for example, I want to put uh, something like from here to here. And so I once I figure out the start and the end, I would just I, I would just uh, you know start drawing, you know, draw and get the detail uh, in uh, the the middle ones uh, here and there. Uh, because uh, it just have, has more control to it. Uh, I think it's easier for me to, you know, go through. Everything. You, one addition that I'll add to this for everybody is the Z-spheres will actually snap to the surfaces too. So if you were to draw with this surface showing, it'll snap and be on top of his actual hard surface points as well. Yeah. So it has that ability too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, and, and 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 so so once you have a you know your z your your z sphere your wire uh, ready, you can just you know I I normally just turn all, turn all this off and make it that this adaptive skin and insert it back in, and I would just uh, I would just smooth a little bit. Sorry. I don't want to, uh, so yeah. Uh, I don't know. Let's turn off this. Uh, so you can just, you know, smooth however you want. Maybe uh, move further along with it. Right. Right. Uh, I think that's pretty much it for the modeling part. And because I have all the, uh, like I said, I have all this the 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 cylinders uh, ready. I can put this model into poses, uh, and I'll show you a little bit more about um, material uh, that comes in uh, with the Redshift in in ZBrush twenty twenty three. Uh, there's a lot of cool uh, new materials here. Um, so let's get the materials. So I'll show you how I material uh, how, how I put materials on the head. So for example, this mask here uh, and um, you can put so if you go to material, there's two sections. Uh, one is redshift polypaint materials that works with the polypaint. And the other one, uh, it's just uh, the the preset color material, and uh, you can use whatever uh, you want. Uh, I so say for example, if I want to put uh, some sort of um, so let's put a camouflage uh, here. I will import a texture. And I created a camouflage here. Uh, like I said, because I'm a concept artist, I don't care too much about the UV map. I will just generate a UV map here uh, by clicking the UV box. And sorry. <laughs> and then you have this uh, this thing with the texture on. And you can adjust, uh, you know, however you want it. Like, this is good, maybe. And then you choose 
sorry, let me turn on Redshift first. And then uh, you, you, you can put, you know, maybe plastic and go to color fill object. You don't have sorry. to select it. So yeah, yeah, uh, I, 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 uh, you need to put, you need to click on the material RB, R, RGB channel and fill object. And you have something like this, right? And right, uh, and everything is the same. You know, you just put on like for 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 this piece, this uh, frame here. I don't need to put on any texture or UV. I could just go here, uh, and maybe use uh, maybe use iron. Let's try iron, and um, and use fill object. You know, and the really cool thing about this is this works with uh, with surface, so I can put noise on 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 this. And as for the eyes, uh, you know, you can use uh, material, and there is one called the where's the glass? Oh, it's right here, uh, glass. And I can choose maybe red and go to color, fill object. So you have a glass uh, 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 eyes. And it does work with noise. Uh, and also, uh, you can go to, and there's another cool thing about Redshift. It, is that it works with emissive. Uh, so I go to basic. And if you go to the material panel, uh, and you can play around with all these different, uh, uh, all these different uh, 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 materials here. And I'll just put emissive here uh, and put red. Uh, and I will just assign fill object. And so, uh, also, so I, like here, I will probably use aluminum and uh, fill object. Yeah, you also turned on your emissive slider for the emissive. You probably want to show them that too. Emissive slider. Yeah. So emissive. Um, your emissive weight. It's set to ten. Yeah, where where is oh that's right here. Yeah. Uh yeah, I think 10 is probably too much. Let's try two. And uh, so I'll try render this by activating the redshift. So I I've already uh activate redshift. I'm gonna put it uh a HDR. So I uh and in the lighting panel, if you go to background and turn this on, and you want to put in, uh, and you want to press P to activate uh, perspective, so that you have these environments, you know, that will light up your your model. And you can just uh, like I I I download this this uh, HDR from HDR. Haven, uh, the Poly Haven, is all free, and I just put it into my light box. So if you press, uh, so if you put out your light box, and go to texture, and go to panorama. So I have this, uh, all these, uh, you know, download from the internet. They're all free, from Poly Haven, um, and this is the one I'm using, uh, and you can just. You know, press Shift R to render this thing. Um, let's give it a try. So the the first time you press uh, the the first time you render, uh, it would send everything to the uh, red Redshift render. So it's gonna take more time uh, the first time you do this. So now it's rendering. Okay. 
Oh, I put on the the uh, well. Yeah, you're gonna miss it on cool. the inside mesh. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, also on the inside. Okay. So let's fix that. Um, oh, okay. Let's sign. Uh, aluminum, maybe. Yeah. Fill object. Let's do it again. So if you look at the eyes, I, I really like the um, the the rendering of the eyes, the the glowing. Um, yeah, so the, what he was bringing up, the first time you guys send anything to Redshift with inside of ZBrush, all that data gets sent. And once you've done one render with this model, your time frame for rendering is going to speed up substantially because Redshift now already has that data. So we're doing allowing that data to be maintained in Redshift. So your rendering will get faster um, as you keep playing around. Yeah. So... Um... Like right here, I think the environment is probably too bright. Uh, let me zoom out a little bit. Uh, so there are two slider uh, slides here. Uh, one is exposure. The other one is redshift exposure. Uh, the exposure is, you know, the environment exposure. And redshift exposure it only happens when you render and it only affects the model. So I think the environment looks okay. So I'll probably just turn turn down the uh, redshift exposure. Probably like point, point six. I'll do another render. Yeah, so again, the separating the slider, there's an overall exposure for the whole scene. And then at render time, he's now telling the exposure to be different at render time or redshift when it renders the model. Yeah. And um, I mean, if you can see, there's a there's something weird happening here with the uh, with the hydraulic. Uh, if I go here and then And then wait, hold on. So, so let me render again. Uh, you, you might see something wrong with the uh, with the mesh here. Um, so let's wait for the uh, rendering. Um, yeah. So as you can see uh, now, uh, you know the hydraulic here, uh, it has a weird shading here. Uh, the reason why is because uh, the mesh that I have is, it has really bad uh, geometry. If I go here, uh, oh, I can't turn on wireframe. Uh, so if I go, if I apply, You have line turned off. You have line turned off. Oh, I have line turned off, okay. So the geometry is okay. Uh, but some of the geometry looks really bad, right? Um, so when it render, it would kind of uh, smooth out, you know, the the geometry. Um, so I I don't want that. I, I I don't want Redshift to smooth out. So you can just go to uh, your subtool palette, and you go all the way down to uh, Redshift properties and turn this uh, smooth surface off. And so, and I, so when you turn this off and you render again, let, let's see. Um, oh, I, I have the wrong material, sorry. Uh, I'll apply uh, iron. I put on new material here, render again. Yeah, now now uh, is rendering the actual uh, geometry here. Um, so I want to so so be, because most of my my subtool has very very bad geometry. So I'm gonna repeat uh, you know this uh, smooth surface. Uh, repeat turning off this smooth surface by go here. Apply less action to all 
subtools, uh, and you press OK. Then every subtool, the smooth surface is turning off. Right. But yeah, uh, so you can just you know, um, materials like this, and this is the final one that I have. Oops, right here. Uh, so yeah, uh, you can render this uh, right now if you want. Um, so normally, I, I I would start from uh, I would start from working out the camera, the camera angle, um, and for example, uh, I'll get probably something like this. And I'll go to uh, sorry draw, and you scroll down to uh, score store cam, and I'll and I'll put uh, right three quarter front, and I'll probably go back here, and I'll say another camera, and you can just click store cam. And I'll probably say three quarter rare. Yeah, you can go, you know, back, oh, uh, back and forth, you know, with the camera. Uh, so when you, you know, say, uh, if I did some render here, so, so I'll render this first um, to give you an idea how, you know, like what, once you settle everything, like the texture, uh, the emissive uh, and the camera angle and the lighting and exposure and everything. And you can just, uh, you know, start render uh, with with the uh, lower resolution ones. Like we, 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 we didn't change the document size, uh, but once you figure out, you know, everything and you can uh, bump up the resolution and do some, uh, you know, high, higher resolution renderings. Um, yeah, when you're playing around, yeah. I probably I tend to use progressive and change some settings in Redshift real quick just to start playing around and figure things out, and yeah. then worry about the final, final, final render, the landed render. But the beta part here is like some of the stuff he's highlighting is being the fact that we have Redshift now with inside of ZBrush. He doesn't have to really prep the model to go somewhere else. It's already here. So there's yeah. no extra steps. Nothing needs to apply. Like his surface noise hasn't even been applied in the model. It's just there showing it. So you don't actually right. have to apply that to the model and get it out to render with something else. So this is the benefit of having some redshift now with inside of ZBrush. It really speeds up your workflows. Right. There you go. right. There's your render. Yeah. And I think so, you have your settings turned uh, up, right? You still have like your uh, error threshold actually turned up pretty high. So the render's oh. gonna get even better. The the what? Now? In the render the... in the render redshift. Oh, what do you have your uh, threshold set to? Redshift one. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, right there. He's got his oh, air threshold right. turned all the way up. So that yeah. one slider right there, that'll put a little graininess in your renders. But the lower you put that, the better quality of render you're gonna get. The longer it'll take the render though as well. So that's why. Mm -hmm. He's experimenting. So this would be an example of what I'm saying. I like to turn that slider up as well to like yeah. 0.5, 0 0.8, and do some experimenting. And then I'll slowly drop it back down to get to my final render. Right, right. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it uh, for the whole for the whole thing. You know, start from the blocking to the details and to texture, lighting, and rendering. Um, it look, yeah, yeah, it looks awesome. And now you've uh, you've been implementing Redshift a little bit more into your workflow, right, to get to your We're, final renders now, so you're because you're staying with inside of ZBrush to do it. Yeah, 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 yeah. So so once you get everything ready, um, and you can probably drop this down, like, let's say point five, and I will probably say if I want a bigger size document, say for example, like. Right, 2000. I'll resize, press yes, 
uh, and I will zoom out and I will drag in my model press T to edit and I can just uh, go back here so you know the camera still is still there right and you can just you know render this uh, it's probably gonna take it's probably gonna take longer um, to render the whole thing yeah but um yeah yeah um, and then to answer the question coming through about can you make your own materials in redshift um, the ZBrush Redshift materials are only right now for just ZBrush Redshift materials. So you can't take a Redshift material out of ZBrush and put it in any other of the DCCs that you're using. Um, not at this time. But again, this is version 1.0 of Redshift being implemented inside of ZBrush. So obviously, there's going to be throughout the years and everything come, this, there's going to be things happening for sure. Right. Um, the one thing I'd also like to share about having Redshift as your renderer. Uh, mm -hmm. is A, you get it. You get Redshift with your ZBrush subscription. So if you guys are a subscriber to ZBrush, you actually also get Redshift for the same subscription. It's the CPU version. Um, if you want to use the, your video card, then you have to pay for that. But if you do decide to use your GPU and you want to get the subscription to Redshift, that same subscription can be used in all DCCs where Redshift is being used which is not just ZBrush. It's Blender, it's Maya, it's Max, it's Houdini, Cinema 4D. You can use that exact same license in all those DCCs. And so you can make Redshift across all those programs as well. Yep. Yeah, so if you have Max on one, you can you can create new materials and all that. You can do all your new materials. Just the Redshift material you make in Cinema 4D, it can't come into ZBrush because there's, there's no node base structure inside of ZBrush right now. So it, there's no way it will know everything from the Redshift material inside of Cinema 4D. So the Redshift material inside of ZBrush, we have a lot, several of the sliders that you use, but it's not going to be able to communicate back and forth right, right now. Yep. Well, that, looks, that looks awesome, man. I like I like the changes yeah. you made, too, with uh, with your color and all. I like that. It looks cool. It make, it's making them pop. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Is there any other questions that uh, came through? Um, I, I I gotta show one thing just because you brought in the Zsphere thing. My 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 wanting to share stuff is itching at me right now. So, sure. Um, before we, uh, I want to show this just so people get aware of the way you were going to with your cables. Mm -hmm. so, but uh, uh, I want to show this and we'll come back real quick. So I'm gonna add this. Cool. Okay, so. Here's an example for you all speaking, just adding on top of TN shown with the Z spheres, right? So this is actually my Z spheres. And then you can see the Z sphere path here. I actually got it converted into a curve. So why you guys care about that is just like he was using the Z spheres and making it a mesh like that. You can actually convert these Z spheres into a curve and then you can use anything you want that goes along a curve, right? So something just to think of so starting from scratch if we delete this just for you all to think this way as well uh you append a z sphere right and now that's your sub tool so now you're going to switch between up here on the top your move scale right here these are the two you're going to switch through the most okay so i want to move and so i'm going to move this maybe in a place that i want then i'm going to scale it i start to use the shortcuts of course Something like this. Okay, so you put this. And um, as I mentioned, any subtool that is visual, the one benefit here for you all too is the ZSphere snap to whatever mesh it sees inside of the ZBrush document space. So right now, it's the, the head is not, I'm not even selecting the head. It's the ZSphere that's selecting. So when I go back and I select this ZSphere, so it's, see, it's selected. If you switch to draw and I start to draw, you're going to notice, right? it's drawing right on the head, okay? So now I can just start literally doing this. Just keep going through, switch back to move, select that Z-sphere, and then just continue the process like that, right? So this is another benefit for you all. And then you can still switch to move and move these things off if you want to, right? Completely move them, 
right? You can switch to rotate and rotate the whole chain, right? And maybe you want the cabling to do that instead. So I, I love his approach of bringing this up. I just wanted to add some, some, some cherries on top of this workflow for you all. Now, the other benefit to us here is, of course, we can hit the A key and get a mesh. Okay, the A is a preview, and what that is a preview of is our adaptive skin. So I'm hitting A, not like because I'm Canadian, not EH, but A, as in the letter A, okay? But this has got a density control, and it's turning into a DynaMesh. So I can actually turn off the DynaMesh, and so you'll get clean topology, and then I can say, you know, give me a little bit more density, right? So this is what he was doing when he was creating those cables. He was just doing something like this. I'm just adding something for you all on top of this now that instead of doing this as well, you can then come up here to the stroke menu and there's a menu that lives here. It's called Curves Helper. This ships with ZBrush. Okay, and there's options here. The one that's very nice is first of all, this. So for example, when I hit A, you can see the tubing's different sizes because me as an artist, I didn't draw out the exact same size of the Z-sphere. So what is very nice is these Z spheres, okay, you can tell it to scale based upon your draw size. So I can say, eh, let's put the draw size about there. And then now go to stroke and say scale the Z spheres and say they all get matched to that draw size. So you guys can actually resize your whole chain by just changing your draw size. And I think for what he was showing, this is really important because how big of cabling in essence do you want? Just change your draw size, and then you're off and running, and boom. Okay? Super simple. Yeah? Hopefully everyone's with me. Okay? Now, the addition is you can copy this chain. Okay? So I can say copy that chain, and you can see Z-Sphere chain has been copied. And then I can say in that same menu, okay, I want you to create a curve and append it as a new subtool. So when I click this... It now created a new subtool that is now that chain has been converted into a curve. And then, of course, now you as an artist can grab any curve, right? So I can even, me, I'm a massive, huge fan now of these profile curves. Because think about your cabling. You can grab any one of these and just, boom, you got different types of cabling. Do you want it to be a cylinder? Do you want it to have some kind of pattern in it? So now you just click any one of these and then boom, like this is the kind of stuff that really gets me. Look, this has got gaps. It's actually got three cables in there. You can do something like that. Like it really opens up your workflow and you as an artist, what you're going to be able to write. See, there's two pieces there, mm -hmm. right? It becomes really, really beneficial. And so you can change the size now again, change your draw size. And now you've got a curve that you can even continue to even now edit this. So it just opens up so many more things for you as well. And I think this is kind of one of our kind of our goals is with ZBrush is we're trying to think artistically, think about, hey, if we did this and this, this would be amazing. OK, so just adding, again, a little whipped cream and cherry on top of what Tien already did. He just sorry, I just had to share that because I love yeah, it's it. great. It's great. It's a yeah, I, yeah I, I don't I don't think I tried that before. I'm, I, I definitely going to implement this. To my new workflow yeah yeah i think it's one of those little hidden ones that people aren't using that's kind of why yeah. i wanted to share i really wanted to share it because i think that's old it's been there for a long time that's not new oh that's okay. been there i uh i want to say we put that in and maybe four or eight maybe oh, okay 2018 so it's it's been there for probably about five to six years i'm not I sure see, about I the see. exact same but it's been there for a long time that's kind of the only reason why i kind of wanted to highlight it for everybody um, cool, cool. Yeah, it's awesome. So, so just something else to add into that fun workflow. So Tian, cool. man, thank you yeah. for being a part of this and showing your workflow and showing how your process that you're working with in ZBrush and doing what you do for hard surface. It was it was amazing to watch you well, see you work so. live and how fast you were working to get to your results as well. Yeah, it, it's it's faster than I expected. I <laughs> I I thought it's gonna be longer. Uh, but it turns out faster. Yeah, but but thank 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 you for um, inviting me to this. No, I like uh, uh, well, watching what you're putting on Zebra Central and Cyberpace is like we got to get Tian in a stream so everyone can see what you're doing. I think you're 
Or and I like to point out people, it's yeah. like in the middle of the morning for him too. So again, an actual <laughs> thank you so much for yeah, being thanks, with thanks. us so early in the morning for you as well. And no problem, um, no problem. <laughs> really, really, it was a lot of fun for me. I thought it was awesome just watching you work. And I know a lot of people really enjoyed seeing you work as well. Um, this will be available for you all to rewatch. It'll be immediately on our YouTube channel, our Twitch channel. So you guys, I encourage you to go back and rewatch that as much as you want. And I saw Kyle's our restream, just this t-shirt I'm wearing. You guys can get one of these for free if you want. Uh, you just have to pay for shipping. We can't do anything about the shipping, but uh, you can get the t-shirt for free. This is an example. One of them, so it's just got placed in the chat um, above. All right. So we just want to add to that. So anything anything additional you want to add, Tien, before we call uh, say goodbye to everybody? Uh, no. No. Uh uh nothing else uh except for uh definitely try it out uh redshift uh render in zbrush 2023 is one of the best uh updates so far i think yeah nice great well i want to thank you again this has been a another zbrush live stream i'm paul gabriel and our special guest was tian fu uh i really appreciate for you all joining in and hopefully we'll see you at the next stream have a great afternoon evening or early in the morning, wherever you are <laughs> in the world. Have a great day. Bye.